Good morning. Today I'm going to talk about the next part of the epithelium, which is the glands. As I said before, that the glands originate from the epithelium. They grow at the surface. Later, they grow in the underlying connective tissue. They may keep their duct, then we call them as exocrine, and maybe lose their duct, then we call them as endocrine. So as I said before, the glands part from the epithelium. Usually these glands, we have the surface epithelium, and we have the basement membrane, and we have the area of the connective tissue. This gland will grow in the sub underlying connective tissue, okay, and will they keep their duct system so the duct system sometimes they keep their duct then we call it as exocrine and sometimes they lose their duct and we call them as endocrine but the important thing that the origin of the gland is from the epithelium the characteristic of the secretory cell type usually the cytoplasm of these cells is basophilic and the reason for that because these cells they have the well-developed rough endoplasmic reticulum and they have the Golgi apparatus which is responsible for the uh, packaging and export the protein outside so we can see here that instead the cytoplasm to have the pink color usually it's more blue in color and you can see here the nucleus they are vesicular in shape and bare staining. This indicates that this nucleus, the DNA, is tend to be condensed in each other. The DNA extended. So that's why it's given the light color. Whenever the cell is active, the nucleus will be pale and staining. Whenever the nucleus inactive, the nucleus will be dark blue. As I said, we have prominent. Golgi apparatus and we have prominent nucleolus. So the product of the gland we call it as the secretion. So the process by which cells take up small molecules from the blood and transfer them into more complex structure, then release them. This process is called the secretion. So the secretion cells will take up small molecules from the blood, transfer them into more complex structure, then release them. This process sometimes need energy. So call it secretion. And when it's passive, without the need for energy then we call it excretion so the secretion and the excretion is the same however the difference between them one need energy and the other one don't need energy as i said this is the epithelium the endoderm for example then we have the down growth of the gland in the sub underlying connective and there is the multiplication of these glands then they have a duct, then we call it exocrine, and if they lose their duct, then we call them as endocrine. But the important thing, the origin of the glands is from the epithelium. As I said, glands originate from the epithelium and penetrate the connective tissue to form the secretory unit, and they keep their duct. So the gland have duct, and they have the secretory units. Exocrine secrete their product into the surface via duct. So this is the secretion will be released from here. Endocrine, they will lose their duct. And mostly they will, their product will be released in the intracellular space and will be collected with red blood cells and where it will go to transfer to their target organ. And in this lecture, we are going to talk only about the exocrine and next semester we are going to talk about the endocrine system so we'll start with the gland and we'll start with the exocrine usually the glands can divide into two types we have the unicellular 
and we have the multicellular. When the gland is only composed of a single cell, then we call it unicellular. And the best example in our body is the goblet cells, which is responsible for production in the music. And the other type, which is the multicellular, which composed of more than one cell. So we have unicellular and we have the multicellular. The multicellular, again, is going to be classified into several types, depend into two criteria. The first criteria is the duct branching. Duct doesn't branch, then we call it as sympathetic gland. If the duct branch, then we call it as compound. So this is the first classification or criteria. The second criteria depend in the shape of the secretory unit because the gland consists of the duct and the secretory unit. So the first criteria is the duct system, whether it's a branch or not. If it's a branch, then it's simple gland. Uh, if it's branch, it's compound. If it's not a branch, then it's a simple. The second one is depend in the shape of the secretory unit. If it's like a sac or alveoli or a tube, then we call it tubular. If it's like a sac, then we call it asinar. If it's like flask, then we call it alveolar. This is the second criteria. So we have unicellular or multicellular. If it's composed of one cell, unicellular, of more than one cell, multicellular. The multicellular further, we divide it depend in the duct branching. If the duct branch, then we call it compound. If there's not a branch, we call it sample. Then we, another classification depend in the secretory unit. Is it asinar, sac-like, or flask-like? alveolar or like straight tubules then we call it tubular the best example in our body for the unicellular is the goblet cells whenever we have this epithelium the symbol columnar we have these cells which inside we have the mucinogen that's once release give us a layer of a mucus these cells goblet cells and we can see these cells goblet cells is found within non-glandular epithelium this is regular epithelium and this is glandular epithelium. As I said, the cells is widely distributed. It's part from the epithelial sheet, secretion. It has secretion, protective and lubricating function. So this is the cells, this is the goblet cells. See here, this is just regular cells and this one here, the goblet cell. Inside this goblet cell, we have these granules we call them as mucinogen. Once released, then we call them as mucin. Again, this is regular epithelium, semicolumnar epithelium, and the cell we have it here, this is the goblet cell, and here we have the product of this gland. Another classification of the exocrine, which is the multicellular, as I said, based in the Two criteria, the shape of the secretory unit, we have the asinar, alveolar, tubular, and then depend in the branching, we have the symbol, and we have compound. So this one like tube-like, symbol, tubular, this is the branched, branched, and here's only one duct, and we have the secretory unit, and see the shape here, we call it the asinar. Okay, you see here, we have different gland, open in the same duct so whenever we have a gland and the duct is not divided then we call it as simple exocrine gland if the duct see here we have the duct and it's divided and each one of these division they have all secretary then we call it as compound exocrine gland see here this is the simple duct Not a branch and like tube. Then this is one duct, simple tubular, simple branch. See here the asinar. And here simple branched. Okay, 
compound. Sometimes it's difficult to classify these gland or to classify them in the slide. As I said before, this gland is not neatly classifiable. It's not easy to classify them. Now, other classification of the gland depend on the secretion. This gland can produce mucus or serous secretion. The serous secretion is the watery secretion. It's like our sweat. However, mucus will be viscous material which protect and lubricate the cell surface. The gland could be considered as mucous gland or serous mucus. However, we have other glands in our body where we have the two parts as found. We have part that is responsible for reduction of the mucus and the other part is responsible for production of the serous substance. See this one here? This is the nucleus and this one is considered as mucus. Usually the mucus is thick and viscous and push the nucleus to the periphery. See here the nucleus is found near the basement membrane. So this one is the mucus gland. And I can easily differentiate. As I said, we have these granules. They are heavy, thick and push the nucleus to the periphery. This one here is the mucus gland. However, in this one here, the nucleus is found in the center. This gland is serous gland. So the difference between them, we look to the nucleus. If the nucleus in the center, then it's serous. If the nucleus in the periphery, then it's a mucus gland. Another type we have, which is the mixed gland, which is the mucoserous gland. See this part here? This is the mucus, and you see here the nucleus in the periphery. Whereas this one here, and this one here, and this one here, the nucleus is found in the center. So one part here, this is the mucus, and the other part is the serous. So this gland can produce both mucus and serous secretion. So we call this one here the mucoserous gland. Another classification depend in the mechanism of secretion. If the cell release their content by exocytosis without any loss in the cytoplasm or the plasma membrane, then we call it as merocrine or ecrine. If there is loss to the apical portion of the cytoplasm with the plasma membrane, then we call this gland apocrine. So in this one here, just released by exocytosis. In this one here, there is the apical portion will pinch off of the cells and will be released as products. So there will be lost for the apical portion of the gland. So that's why we call it apocrine. And if the cells totally will die and release as a product, then we call it as halocrine. And a good example about this type here is the sebaceous gland, which is found near the hair follicle. So in the first one, the acrine, as I said, there's no loss of the cytoplasm. Usually the cells cuboidal to columnar. As I said, most of the exocrine and all endocrine release their product by the acrine or the merocrine process. So in the apocrine, as you can see here, this is the top of the cells. These tops will bench off and release a product. So there will be loss of the cytoplasm beside the plasma membrane. And because it's lost in the apical portion, so that's why they call it apocrine. And the last type we have, which is the halocrine, this is the sebaceous gland, the cells proliferate. From here, as the cells goes up, they died and release as a product, the whole cell. So that's why we call it as the halocrine. And the only example we have in the human 
and mammals, the sebaceous gland. And usually these sebaceous glands will be near the hair. And this structure here, this gland, we have to memorize because this is the only gland have this shape, this shape that we have here, which is the typical of the sebaceous gland. As I said, the sebaceous gland will be near the hair. These are filled with lipid droplets. As I said, when they go up, they will die and release as a product. From here, they came the name the sebaceous gland. And this is the only example for the holocrine that found in our body, which is the sebaceous gland. So this here, this gland, there is no loss for any portion of the cell, so we call it the metacrine or acrine. In this one here, see this here, the apical portion, there will be lost of this apical portion, so we call it as the apocrine. And the last one, which is near the hair follicle, this one here, this is the hair follicle. This gland here, with this shape, characteristic shape, we call it as the sebaceous gland and the mode of secretion. The mode of secretion is the 